Hi, this is Ken from the Computer Clan, and today I thought it would be nice to give you a little tour of the TriCaster system. This is sort of a look of behind the scenes of a live production, and if you follow us you know we do live shows and stuff, but not everything we do is done with something like a TriCaster. We use an individual computer and some special software. However, the TriCaster, on the other hand, basically is the same thing as just a computer, however, it's a little more high-end for real-time performance. And that's what this thing is right here. This is a TriCaster, and here's all the video input and the audio out. And this, I believe, has a core i5 in it, I want to say. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a tri-core system. We can verify that, though, when we boot it up. So it's really just a special PC with a bunch of input on the front so we can get video and audio and headphones and things like that. But there's way more to it than just that. If we take a look over here, you will notice that we have a soundboard system. And this is where all the audio is controlled. So for example, this is the audio input for all of the channels, one, two, three, etc. So if we have three mics, for example, we can use these three sliders to adjust the decibels for each mic. And up here there's like a gazillion more controls, and most of the time when we do productions here at this studio, we don't even touch these. And on top you will see we actually have the audio in cables. This is where the microphones plug in. And as you can see, we also have some other open spaces, so if we have other mics, we can plug them in, but we just use three for most of our live productions. Now the control board, this is where we can do things like switch cameras. So for example, we have preview and program. Preview is what we see behind the scenes, and program is what people see on television. This is the part that's live. And we can switch between cameras, videos, and other things. And we have playback controls for like left, right, stop. Transitions, we can switch between cameras here, we can do fades and do custom transition times just by using the slider. We can reposition assets in a canvas and switch inputs with these buttons and all these other great things just from the control board. All that stuff can also be controlled at the software level on screen. As you can see we also have two HP monitors hooked up to the TriCaster. These came with the system. So the TriCaster system comes with the TriCaster itself, the soundboard, the control board, dual screens, and the keyboard and mouse and that is over here. So sometimes you need to do other things on the system that just use a keyboard and mouse for basic PC input. This particular TriCaster runs Windows Vista as a base, but you don't use Windows that often. You use the special TriCaster software, and that is what you use to edit the videos, create your graphics, import your assets, and control the cameras, etc. So let's take a look at it actually booted up. Okay, so this model of TriCaster has the power button right in the front here. We have our two lights here, one is for activity and one is just for power. I believe that is what that is. So we'll just boot this up. Now maybe that's not for power. I actually don't know what that light is for. But this is hard drive activity. So yes, we're booting into Windows Vista right now and the TriCaster software will automatically start up. And we should be at our startup screen pretty soon. Okay, so Windows Vista is booted up and the special TriCaster software is booted up as well. And this is the main menu here. And this is part of the interface. We can just scroll around here if we want to exit to Windows or reset the computer. We can open previous files. We can get help if we need it. And there's other add-ons, other programs you can run. So one add-on we have on this TriCaster here is called the Virtual Set Editor. And instead of explaining more of that, I will just show you what this is. But you can probably guess by the name, Virtual Set Editor, it lets you edit virtual sets. If you watch a news program or something, you usually see these fancy desks that are like 3D graphics and custom backgrounds and stuff like that. That's usually controlled through a program similar to this virtual set editor. So you can choose one of these presets and you can do a lot of customization with these. You can bring in your own assets, replace pictures and textures and things. You can also build your own from scratch. And these are really neat because they're not just still image backgrounds and foregrounds with like 3D desks and stuff, but they will calculate things like reflections as well. So, for example, let's just pull one up here, kind of like a news theme. This one has 12 layers in it. Okay, so we have this preset opened up here. And on the side here is where we can change all of these different settings. And as we hover over them, they actually highlight in our canvas here. And we can check them to turn them on and off. Let's say I don't want this still image here. I can check that. I can expand this downward, change size and position, and all this other stuff. Rotation even, and multiple axes. I can reset it in case I screw up. But I can also just go to a file browser here. So let's say I want to browse for a file. I will go to Virtual Set Editor Content. And there's a lot of preloaded stuff. Like I said, there's a lot of built-in things, but you can definitely add your own assets in here if you choose to. And we do that a lot here as well. So let's say I want this custom image in here. And that's what that looks like. I can also set different zooms. 
So when we're shooting, we can kind of simulate how the camera works. So we don't actually need to zoom a physical camera, but we can set the zooms in our virtual set editor. So all this stuff, even though it looks somewhat real, kind of like what you would see on a news program, this is all computer generated, and even the animation for the zooming is simulated. And we can set that to multiple points and access them later while we're actually doing our live production. So I created a file earlier, but I'll actually create a new one to show you kind of how that works. You can choose your resolution. I'll just do 720p high definition. NTSC, we're in America, so that's probably the best option. And you can choose where you want to save your files to. We save to the D drive because that is where our media is. And you can give it a name. I'm just going to call this test and hit start session. And something already exists with that name, so I'm going to call this a test one. I'll delete these later. And now we have these other options. We can edit previous recordings. We can make other graphics if we need to and manage our assets. But if we go to this live icon here, we can hit start live, and that is where all the magic happens. We can control a bunch of things at the software level, but that's also where that control board comes in handy. On the right side here, we can control all of these different things here. There's so many things we can do. Chroma keying with green screens, manage our cameras. This is our preview. This is the program. This is what people see live. And over here, we actually get larger previews of that just so it's easier to see. So I can use the control board to do different things if I want to, but I can also use the mouse if I need to control like an import of an asset or something like that. So now in this interface, we could mess with our live sets down here. There's a bunch of built-in ones we could load in there or we could load in that one we used earlier. But also, we have our camera previews up here. There's not a lot going on right now with the green screen, but usually we would have people sit here and we would have that computer generated desk over there and for some reason the cameras I guess are set in 4x3 right now but the canvas is 16x9 but down here this is where I can switch the cameras so for example let's say we actually had something going on and I wanted to see what camera 2 would look like I would press 2 and then I could see it but the live people still see camera 1 but if I press number 2 here on the red area which is program then they see camera 2 as well I can also press an auto button and I could have them fade. So let me get one on standby here, and I could fade that. So I could do a transition. I could just press take, and it will automatically cut between them. Or I could use this lever, and I could crossfade it manually. And as you can see, as I apply motion to this lever here, the software lever also responds in real time. So I can control transitions in real time, or I could have the automatic button take care of that for me. Also, you can switch between cameras here, just to reiterate. Red is live, and green is your preview, and they will update on both of our displays. Also, let's say, for example, I wanted to get that green out of there. Let's say I actually had a background I wanted to put in there, or maybe I was loading it into a virtual set like the little thumbnail down here shows. So let's say I want camera 2 to be chroma key that's taking out the green of the green screen here. One of our lights actually looks like just burned out, so there's some shadow issues, but we don't need that as an actual thing right now. This is just a little demo. So I can come up to this little menu up here, for one of our camera previews, and I can go to something called Live Mat and Crop, and this is where we can crop, you know, change where the video cuts off, and we can chroma key by selecting a color, and we can take the green background out. So I could drag this little color picker here, and drag it over a color, and remove it. So now this, it looks like it's black because there's nothing back there, but we can actually put a background in there, and it would look like we could put ourselves anywhere, really. Any kind of image can go in there. Also, it's good to note how we sort of see things behind here. Of course, we're looking at the computer screens and everything, but behind the screens, we have these windows. And this is where we can see all the subjects in front of the green screen, and we have our cameras over here. And those monitors are teleprompters, so when we have subjects out there, they can get the script displayed to them right on the screen in case they forget something, and they can read right off of that. So we have someone back here controlling that, and of course we have people sitting at the TriCaster, one person doing audio, one person doing the technical side, and we usually have a director with our on-screen talents in the actual studio. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour of a behind-the-scenes look at live productions and, more specifically, the new tech TriCaster. Videos are just the beginning. Check out these other great websites for great content from the Computer Clan and subscribe for more great videos from Real Deal Productions.